Fables of La Fontaine The Camel and the Driftwood The first who saw a real live camel ran for his life. The second ventured near. The third, with rope ready, without a fear, made a strong halter, the wild thing to trammel. Habit has power to quickly change things that at first seem odd and strange. Stale they grow and quickly tame, and hardly seem to be the same. And since the question's open, once there stood a lookout watching all the distant flood. And seeing something far off on the ocean, could not conceal his notion. It was a man of war. A moment passed. It turned a fire ship, all a taunt and brave. Then a big boat, and next a bale. At last, some mere drift timber jostling on the wave. How many things watched by the world agree? In this, that far away you see that there is something, yet when sought, and seen still nearer, it proves not. Well, there you have it. What's this all about? The camel and the driftwood. Well, it reminds me of an old quote from Mark Twain. I've had a lot of worries in my life, most of which never happened. Well, <clears throat> This is very similar. It also brings to mind the saying, familiarity breeds contempt. So, basically the story is that first time somebody saw a camel, they didn't know what it was, they were scared, they ran for their lives. So, then the next time they saw it, they kind of had a bit more bravery and approached and by the third time they were ready with a rope to catch the camel and try to tame it and then he talks about a lookout watching the distance sea and first he sees a man of war a man of war is a battleship so, oh my God, there's a battleship coming. We're all doomed. And then he came a little closer. He thought it might be a fire ship. Well, what a fire ship was, um, they'd take an old ship and probably fill it with gunpowder or just set it on fire and set it adrift among our armada of enemy ships. And it would either blow up and damage the ships, hopefully sinking a couple of them, or else it would be on fire and set fire to these ships. Back then, the ships were made of wood. The rigging was hemp rope. The sails were hemp, you know, um, yeah, just material. So, then he watched it, oh, it's just a big ship. And then it was a bale, something just floating. And then ultimately, when it got close enough, it was driftwood. So nothing to worry about. And this we see all the time, that you often worry about things and as time goes by, you realize that you didn't have to worry so much about it. Kind of reminds me of right now with the pandemic, this um, COVID-19. Everybody was worried, oh my God, half the world's going to die. And we're all going to be sick and our parents and our grandparents and everybody's at risk and our children and yes some people died but most of those people had a lot of contributing factors whether it was obesity or 
other health problems, diabetes, heart disease, things like that, comorbidities. Most of the people who became ill and died, <clears throat> it wasn't healthy people who took care of their bodies and things like that. They were sick people, basically, that had other medical issues. Those are the ones who generally died. Yes, there are a few ex exceptions, but by and large, this whole pandemic was pretty mild. And compared to the amount of fear and worry, it proved to be nothing. And of course, even these days, people still insist on wearing masks, even though how effective are these masks? Probably not very effective, but if it makes some of these nervous types more comfortable to see you wearing a mask, then most of us just agree it's not worth the hassle not to wear the mask. Forced um, inoculations of the so-called um, vaccine which actually is very different from a traditional vaccine. How they got around calling this gene therapy a vaccine was, well, they just changed the definition of vaccine. But anyway, point is, it seemed to be much more serious at the beginning, a lot of worry, and as time went by, probably nothing really to worry about. And a lot of our worries are like this. When we know something potentially bad is coming down the pipe, we tend to get overly worried, catastrophize. We think the worst and eventually most of these problems we deal with and they sort themselves out and hopefully some of these terrible problems we're dealing with now will sort themselves out in time as well. Like Mark Twain says, he had a lot of worries. Most of them never came true. So does that mean we shouldn't worry? No, worrying is healthy. We evolved to worry for a reason. If worrying was useless, we wouldn't do it. But we shouldn't catastrophize, and when we worry, we should think about the danger and prepare for the worst. Hope for the best, prepare for the worst. Most times, it's not so bad. Sometimes it's nothing, and sometimes it is terrible. Sometimes it's worse than you think, but by and large, most of the time, it's manageable. So that's basically the story of the camel and the driftwood. Hang in there and things that are causing grief, unfortunately, may take months to sort out. Hopefully it doesn't take years to sort out. But if we say stay strong and stay hopeful, hopefully before too long, things will start to improve. Anyway, let's try to be strong and keep the hope alive. If you have anything you wish to add, down below please. Until next time, love you. Goodbye.